right, guys, what's up? Uh, it's Enrique, team leader, PRG Real Estate, brokered by EXP, and I'm excited for today's uh, interview. I got my special guest, Mr. Herbin Montano. Welcome to the interview, brother. Hey, glad, uh, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, so this segment is our agent success spotlight, um, where I feature agents, you know, in our organization who are performing extremely well or bringing something unique to the table. And I really, really wanted to showcase you, Herbin, because you are having some tremendous success uh, in the month of June. Um, while everyone is seeing like that the market is changing and things are shifting um, and they're talking about recession and all these different things, like you're not even like worried about that. You're just moving forward. And I think um, last time I checked, you got six buyers in contract for the month of June. Is that correct? Six, yeah, working on seven and eight right now. You're working on seven and eight. I know we got a few more days left in June and you might be able to get them in before month end, uh, which I think will be a, probably a record uh, month for you as far as you know, new business and contract, right? Yeah, yeah, record all time for, for myself, yeah. <laughs> awesome, Herbin. So um, I wanted to kind of get into some of the details, you know, and, and tell some of the listeners a little bit about you um, and then also talk about like, you know, what are you doing to be successful right now? Because I think a lot of agents need coaching right now. They need training. They need the right strategies to win in the market as the market changes. Then what we do has to change as well. So let's start off, Herbin. Like, just give me the quick, you know, one, two minute background on you. Like, who is Herbin? Where'd you come from? Why'd you get into real estate? How long you been in the game? Like, talk to me. Oh man, that's a loaded question. Uh... So yeah, my name is Irvin Montano. Um, I've been in the game for about uh, two years. I've been licensed for three, but like most agents, you get the license, you don't do much with it the first year. Um, COVID hit, pushed me in the right direction. Um, yeah, but uh, whole life, um, just have a community college education, but I've been doing sales my whole life. From uh, selling TVs for Best Buy, selling washes and dryers for Sears, um, and selling uh, beautiful rooms with beautiful views in San Francisco. So uh, real estate just kind of was that progression. Um, but yeah, ironically, ironically, right? Got into real estate because I wanted more freedom. <laughs> if you don't control your calendar, it doesn't feel that way, right? So, um, but yeah, real estate, just, I just love helping people, meeting new people. Um, as you know, I'm in your office, so I like being uh, the comedian sometimes. and. Once I find clients that are uh, a great audience, we just have a really good experience, really good time. And, um, and at the same time, help them, right? Uh, reach their real estate goals. <laughs> yeah. So that's my approach. Let's have fun and get you, get you home. <laughs> awesome, awesome, man. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, so you joined, how long has it been since you joined uh, our organization? Um, a little bit under two years. Um, walked into your office around uh, August of 2020. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. We, we got connected through, you know, other agents that were on our team. And what I noticed about you, Herbin, initially when you joined us is that like you're just a people person, man. Like you love being in the mix. You love talking to people. Um, even now, you know, we've developed, you know, obviously a partnership and a friendship. And you're just always like one of the lives of the party. You know, you like you like being out there, man. You like being in the mix. Would you say that's that's true? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's uh, not right off the gate, but I just, uh, I'm a, I like to adapt. I yeah. like to adapt to the situation, the people, and um, that find that common interest. So, yeah, and uh, sometimes I become a little bit too, too out there, and then sometimes I gotta <laughs> tone it down a bit. But again, it's, uh, it, it makes it all, it makes it all fun. And, and, uh, and again, uh, a relationship has definitely, yeah. Uh, grown over the years and i'm super grateful to be part of this team again it's uh it's been a wild ride <laughs> <laughs> awesome man and like why real estate like you've had a sales job but like what in particular like got you to like all right i want to do real estate because real estate's a tough job man so what why real estate um i had like i said it's um it's a it's a it's a little bit of a combination of uh wanting a little bit more personal freedom not having to ask for days off or anything like that right what everybody's really looking for um but i did a little bit of architecture in community college i really enjoyed um the long hours in the studio um being around the same people especially with our culture 
right? We'll be in the we'll be in the office for extremely long hours, sometimes from like eight to nine p.m. And I had a similar experience um, in college where we would be in the studio doing our designs. But and I I, I love the fact that I was able to build some really lifelong relationships within within that studio environment. So walking into this real estate office, it felt the same, right? Um, but uh, so yeah, having a small architectural background combined with um, sales experience, right? And wanting, genuinely wanting to just help people, real estate kind of seemed like a, like a really good fit. Um, and then again, even, even small little silly things like selling washers and dryers and refrigerators for Sears, when I walk into these, these beautiful homes, right? Here in um, even Willow Glen, Berryessa, uh, Cambrian, um, I'll, I'll have fun with my clients. I'll say, hey, look, that's a Thermador uh, refrigerator. Hey, look, these washers and dryers are super fun. So I'm just, you know, just sharing previous past experience, natural light design, and it, it, it all just kind of comes together for me. Um, so, you know, it's not that I love homes, but I, I love the experience of um, walking through a home with my clients. Yeah, and being part of that journey, it seems like, right? Yes, the journey. Awesome, awesome. So good stuff, man. I mean, let's talk, let's talk really quick. Now that we talk about journey, right? Let's talk about your journey, right? In the last two years um, from being, you know, a new agent. I remember when you first came in and you were first kind of learning how to prospect and use some of our systems and follow up with leads and stuff like that. I remember, I remember one day you were in the office and you were super nervous and I was sitting right next to you and I was listening to every call you were making and I was critiquing you and you were fumbling your words and stuff to now, you know, two years later, almost you're off on your own. You're a mentor in our office. You're one of the leaders. You really are, you know, part of the glue that holds us together and then get six clients, almost eight clients in contract in a month. Like what have you learned over the last two years? Like where are like the, maybe a couple points that you've learned about the business or, or what it takes to thrive in this? Ah, man. Just learn to be yourself in a new environment, I think is probably the best way to answer that. Um, again, I've always done sales face-to-face -face sales my entire life, that, that's my thing, right? Mm -hmm. But COVID kind of took that away from us with eliminating the open house and all of these different things, right? So walking into this new environment where it was, I would say 99% cold calling and I've never done that before, and then having the, the broker right there, Enrique, right next to you, listening to your calls, it just adds on to that pressure, right? But um, just getting familiar, uh, putting in the time, get, uh, internalizing the scripts, and then making them your, your own, right? Uh, and just being genuine on the phone and in person, I think that was the major switch for me. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I would say just to keep it, you know, uh, adapting to the new situation and making it your making it your your own i think was yeah 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 that's awesome and you definitely adapted it in more ways than one right you like you said you've adapted to learning the systems the processes the scripts and then you've also have adapted to you know the hustle the grind and what it takes to really succeed right and then also adapting to the new changes in the market and what's happening today um you're a hustler man like i you're always out there, man. If, if anybody follows you on Instagram, they're going to see you out there showing homes, meeting with clients, like making something happen. Like, what can you say about the hustle that it takes to really make it happen? The hustle that it takes to really make it happen. Um, find something about this field or some, some people call it a niche, mm -hmm. right? But find something about it that you truly, genuinely like love right because then um right uh whether it's you know going out and seeing homes or genuinely connecting with your client and forming that friendship with them yeah you would you forget about the time you forget about the amount of work and you're you, you just keep pushing through it the hours are passing the time is passing but you don't it doesn't feel that way because you genuinely want to help this individual that you found this connection with and you want to see them like get to the finish line right so um that way the grind doesn't really feel like a like a grind 
yeah more of a, an adventure a, a process um so yeah just finding that 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 um that joy in the business and i found it um it was easier to find through my uh soi through my sphere um yeah. helping a stranger as a new agent is way more um daunting or maybe uh difficult to uh, to do maybe um than helping someone that you already know mm-hmm. right and I think one of those people that um that was a shout out to my cousin Josh one of my my very first spear uh, f- uh family clients he really yeah. helped me get out of that um mental block i could really yeah. be myself for the first time and and, and talk real estate mm-hmm. as hervin mm-hmm. that is okay Irvin. So now it's genuinely Herman being loose himself, you know, th- talking in the third person here, but talking real estate for the first time at that level. And then going through a transaction from from A to Z with my cousin Josh really helped me now take that same energy to a stranger off of a Zillow lead source or a Redfin lead source. So um finding that first uh finding that first niche, that first love, that first connection with the business. and facilitating it through through uh, different sources. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I I love how you put that, man, cuz what I'm hearing is like I t- I asked you about the hustle and the grind and and what I hear you saying is like when you find the passion behind that, right? When you find really what it is you love to do or what you love about the business, it doesn't feel like hustle and grind because you're putting in a lot of hours, man. You're a, you're up late, you're up early, you're traveling, you're all over the place, all over the Bay Area uh helping clients, but you're passionate about it right so like the time just goes and you don't realize and then you know it leads to obviously to the success you're having and then the other big takeaway i hear is 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 be yourself right try to be yourself as much as possible and like isn't that great like you're able to be yourself but then still talk real estate and like a lot of agents i think are trying to be someone else right like or who they think they should be right Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that's uh we get in our we get in our way. I I remember you talking about this um a few months ago where if you're trying to work with people that just don't mesh with you or maybe you're it's just not your um the same energy, the same vibe, it's going to make the 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 process or the job, the work uh, that much more um difficult, right? Um so trying to find uh, people just like yourself um whether um it's just the same energy maybe you have, you have a common interest or maybe the things that you laugh about are the same little little things like that right um will definitely make this process a lot um a lot better um and then i i know we, we're here in the south bay um yeah and you know maybe having a suit right a suit and and tie what going around the viewing homes in this hot summer south bay weather may not be the the most ideal so Uh, I wouldn't shy away from just, you know, being, you know, looking professional but just being yourself a little bit more casual. Sometimes um it really helps to especially with our clientele down here. Yeah, awesome man. Good good advice. Um so I want to move to you know, the second half of the segment is really just talking about what you're doing now, right? Because there's obviously the market is changing, right? You know, because of interest rates going up, because of different things in the economy. it's created some challenges right and but I really feel like you've taken some of those challenges and actually turned them into opportunities for yourself and and you're having a, a record breaking month so talk to me about like what you're doing right i want the listeners to be able to get some tangible things that you're doing today to adapt to the environment maybe how you think about the business or maybe how you speak to your clients or maybe strategies like what can you tell me about how you got six buyers in contract and two more possibly on the way in this this month right yeah um i think it it's a combination of a few simple things simple things um setting the right expectation right and that's super fundamental back in january we would tell our clients expect to pay this much more over a list a lot of the listing prices are it's all market marketing right so we set that expectation now uh coming into this market um i like to ask my client first what have you heard about the market what what's what's your experience right because they 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 have friends family news all in their their ear uh-huh. right so their friends family news all in their ear so i want to see what their experience is uh 
then I give my my perspective. Yes, uh, today's market is uh, I say friendlier to buyers, right? <laughs> um, it's not entirely a buyer's market. Uh, even in this market, uh, a hot market like Cupertino and Santa Clara, they're still going. They're going strong, right? Um, but other other pocket uh, other pockets of Peninsula, South Bay, and East Bay, yes, they have experienced um, certain uh, slowdowns, right? So I always tell my client, uh, depending in the area that we look in and how remodeled the home is and how the home is priced, you may or may not experience um, X amount of competition, right? I tell them every pocket, every neighborhood is different. And I will let you know um, once we get there, right? So not yeah. over promise, not, you know, things like that. Um, another thing too is a consistent um, follow-up really knowing your database. Um, there were certain clients in the past, maybe the past two years or the past year that maybe only had 3% down, maybe only had 5% down and they couldn't compete against these outrageous um, offers or other people with higher down payments, right? Um, last year we were going up against people that were coming in with 50% down, right? So, uh, I, remembering the clients that couldn't compete last year, follow up, give them a call and give them the good news, <laughs> all right? And it's like, I have good news for you. The market yeah. has is, is friendlier right now, right? So um, I've been able to get um, one of my good uh, friends uh, into contract with 3% down and we got credits back from the seller on top uh, of that, right? Uh, so um, two, two actually, two of them in the last month. But again, knowing your market, right? You can't do that everywhere, right? Knowing the market, guiding your client, and don't forget about the little guys. Because the little guy right now is winning big. big. <laughs> don't forget yeah. about the little guy. <laughs> yeah. I like that, man. I, I, I want inter to interrupt you there. Um, you said a couple powerful things that I think you said was number one is, is setting the right expectations, right? Like the tables were turned six months ago, right? Now it's, you know, and you were setting certain expectations back then. So you're now having to shift the conversation that you're having, right? Um, you know, and, and understanding how to communicate that to clients. Um, I really like how you said, you're not calling this a shifting market. You're not saying the market's crashing. You're saying it's friendlier. Right. Like, I didn't even know you were saying that, man. But I think that's genius that you are approaching this as an opportunity. Right. Like it's all a matter of how you're framing it for the client. Right. And you're also asking the client, like, what have you heard about the market? And that's something we've, we've talked about in our in our sales meetings is if you ask five different clients what they've heard, they're going to give you five different answers. Right. Mm -hmm. And And oftentimes some clients are way off. Right. Like there's the. There's what they think is happening, and then there's actually the reality of what's happened, right? So I think that's a, a very crucial step in just assessing your client first and seeing where they stand, what their starting point is, and how they're looking at the market. And then from there, you're able to give your advice based on you know your experience, right? So yes. really, really powerful stuff. Um, what advice would you give? You know, because I'm sure there's going to be, you know, probably some real estate agents, you know, who follow you watching this and then probably some of your friends, family, clients watching this. What advice would you give to anybody looking to buy or sell right now in this current market? Um, well, we talked a lot about the buy side right now, right? So yeah. to sell, uh, you definitely need to um, uh, be conscious and really have a very good conversation, detailed conversation. And honest conversation with your realtor right because um the shift or a shift or the, the change right in this market happened so quickly right just a few months ago we were talking about record prices 20 offers on home 50 offers on home right and just it seems like overnight boom zero offers maybe three offers maybe they're all bad offers right so just having an honest conversation with your realtor and set real expectations if you especially in this market um i know that when you're when you're um when you're when you're thinking of uh listing your home you should you should be um interviewing three four or five different agents but just be cautious 
when somebody is promising you the world, right? Um, just go for the person that's a realist with you, um, uh, price the property correctly, and just um, truly listen, right? And I yeah. think the biggest losers right now on the selling side are, are unfortunately sellers that maybe have unrealistic expectations for this particular market, but you also have to look at the realtor that's representing yeah. the seller. Are they not providing the right updates to their seller to really set them on the right path? Um, same thing goes for buyers. Um, I have I have met with many buyers this month and there are a few, maybe more than a few, 50% of them that tell me, yes, I want a great deal. I want a great, I can identify a great deal. Yes, I want to lowball the home by $100,000. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm on your team. I'm like, hey, I'm on your team. But let's, let's, let's uh, take this into perspective. If you were the seller, and you received a lowball offer by $100,000, and you've been on the market for one week, what would you do? And I ask them <laughs> that question. And, yeah. I'm like, and then I give them two options. Would you take that offer? Or would you go into, or would you tell me as your agent to host another open house? And the answer 100% of the time has been host another open house. Yeah. Right? So, um, just having those kind of scenarios, those those uh, those conversations, right? Um, yeah. And, they, and like I said, and then uh, uh, presenting the right opportunity in which maybe submitting an offer like that would would make sense. Maybe the home yeah. has been sitting on the market for uh, thirty days, or you know, what it whatever it is. But just having those those honest conversations and, and yeah. perspective on that side too. And I, I think that that's a powerful point you bring, right? Like overall, what, what, what I hear you saying is that you cannot be afraid to confront your client or have that tough conversation with your client for the sake of getting them to their goal, right? Like, but you frame it in a way where it doesn't sound like you're clashing with them. You make it in a fun way. Like, Hey, Mr. Client, and you're laughing. And even as you're explaining it to me, what would you do? Right? Like, and you're having that tough conversation, right? And one thing, sorry for interrupting, but uh, before I forget, because I'm very uh, forgetful. Um, one thing too uh, is have your client, if you have the courage and you have the skill, just do it. Have them listen to the conversation between you and that listing agent. Mm. Just put them on speaker and have the client hear, right? So they, they understand that what you're saying is also credible because they're hearing it from some, somewhere else, right? Yeah. So, you know, have those conversations, put them on speakerphone so that they, you can all kind of, you gain credibility, the client gets new experience, um, and then you can recalibrate the strategy if you need to. That's an awesome tip, man. That's a really, really awesome tip. And it's it's funny, man, because a lot of a lot of the things you do, obviously there's the fundamentals of what, what a good agent should do and, or you know a strong salesperson, but there's all these little details that you're adding to it, right? That, are making the big difference, right? Like getting the agent on the phone, putting them on speaker, the tough conversations. And I think it's all of those things combined is, is really w why I think you're having so much success. And uh, what, I, what I really admire about you is you're not stuck in your ways, right? Like you're, you understand and you've learned that you have to adapt, right? You have to adapt, you have to tweak. You, you mentioned the word recalibrate a bunch of times, right? Like not only are you having to recalibrate your strategy, the clients have to recalibrate their strategy, right? And, and it, it show it really showcases, Herman, your, your growth mindset, right? Like, I always got to keep learning. I got to keep tweaking, you know, and, and I think that's why you're having so much success. So um, I think that's it, man. I, I mean, I don't want to take too much of your time because I know you're busy. I know you got some more deals to get in contract for the month. But I do want to end with just congratulating you, man. You know, and just it's it's awesome to see your success. It's awesome to see your growth within our organization. You know, your contribution to our team, um, the leadership that you've shown. You mentor you mentor other agents on our team as well. Um, and I'm pretty sure if any agent wanted to call you, or if any clients wanted to call you for advice, you're all open to sharing information because I know that's who you are. So, how do people get a hold of you? I know you're big on IG. What's your IG handle? It's uh. Hervin, H-I-R-V-I-N dot M, 
www.hervinmontano.realtor. That's IG and uh, Facebook, Hervin Montano. There you go. So Instagram, hervin.m.realtor. I'll put that in the description as well. And then on Facebook, Hervin Montano. And then, uh, yeah, reach out to Hervin. He's got the answers. He's got the success right now. Uh, thank you, man. Congrats to all your success. And I, I think this was a great interview. Awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, thank you for, again, learning and uh, being part of this awesome team. All right, brother. We'll talk soon, man. Have a great day. All right. Peace.